Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to ask the question, is the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator MBTI assessment fake? Mm. As a personality diagnostic tool, yes. As a recruitment tool, most definitely. As a behavioral prediction tool, absolutely. Now as a tool for self-reflection and group discussion in a training, it has, it has some merits. And, you know, it has merits for facilitating a discussion on how we differ from each other. Now, taken by more than 2 million people annually, the MBTI assessment is undoubtedly the most popular personality test that, that's out there. As an introspective self-reporting test, it has 93 questions. And it claims to be able to assign one of 16 different personality types to every single individual human being on the planet. The Myers-Briggs Foundation, which owns the, the right to the test and sells the test and certifies um, people, makes upwards of £11 million a year by doing so. The claim that the test offers people an objective insight into their strengths and weaknesses, which then helps them prove themselves, is uh, dubious at best. In addition, it also apparently offers businesses an unrivaled insight to improve interpersonal communication so as to create the agile, robust culture that companies need to succeed in today's competitive markets. Now, this all sounds quite nice, of course, but there's one core problem. The test is pretty meaningless. It has no benefit whatsoever, and it's lacking any scientific basis. As the American psychologist Robert Hogan noted, the Myers-Briggs test is regarded by leading psychologists as a little more than an elaborate fortune cookie. Now, based upon uh, untested and widely discredited theories of Carl Jung, the test was developed in the 1940s by two American authors, Catherine Cook Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers, a mother and daughter team. Now, a lot of people will say that, you know, they had no basis in psychology, they had no qualifications in psychology, and whilst that's true, they were two highly educated women. Both of them at the time were college ed ed educated, which of course was, was quite unusual. So they were educated and they did have a, a huge interest in human behavior and human personality. But they were heavily influenced by the English translation of Carl Jung's book on psychological types, which he published in the late 1920s. Now, in the book, Jung had explained that he believed humans roughly fell into two types, perceivers and judges. These two main types, or these two main groups, could then supposedly be subdivided into two groups each. So the first group was divided into those who prefer sensing and those who prefer intuiting and the second group into those who were more rational and those who were more emotional. And all four of these types could in turn be further divided based on the attitudes of introverts and extroverts. However, importantly, Jung himself expressly noted that these categories were only proximate, and he admitted that all people will probably fall into at least having a little bit of each one. Now, the thing is, you won't find the same nuance with MBTI, the test is quite frankly based entirely on the simplistic notion that people either fall into one category or another, and completely so. And it arrives at its conclusions based on respondents' answers to rather silly questions, really. You know, such as, do you tend to sympathise with other people? With respondents only being given the option between two very blunt answers of yes or no you can already begin to see the challenge here. Ultimately, there, there is no solid evidence for the dichotomies into which MBTI assessment wants to categorize or classify all people. It relies on limited binaries, and let's be honest, most people's personalities simply can't be classified into either or opposites. Personality traits are simply far too complex to be evaluated by a test with such immense limitations. No single person in the world is exclusively an extrovert. No single person is exclusively an introvert. Even the data and results from the MB MBTI assessment itself, as flawed as it is, shows that most people score somewhere in the middle for any and every category. 
Another central problem with the test is that regardless of who you are, your results will always be flattering, without exception. Ultimately, the truth is that the test simply hasn't been designed to categorize human personality types, something which, mind you, is a psychological impossibility anyway to begin with. Rather, the test was designed to make people feel good about themselves by telling them something that they like to hear, and they do that very well. The arbitrary nature of the test is evident from the fact that research has shown that as many as half of people, when doing the test for a second time, get a completely different result. The reality is that our answers to the test questions may actually differ from day to day, depending on factors such as such as even the mood that we happen to be in at the, the time that you take the test. No psychologist, certainly no behavioural or occupational psychologist anyway that I know of, will ever use the MBTI assessment, nor recognise its authority. And, you know, being a so-called certified uh, test administrator for Myers-Briggs, which incidentally costs $3,000 for a four-day course, is really a meaningless qualification. Personality itself is recognised by psychologists as being simply far too complex, to even attempt to categorize the entire planet's population into a limited number of essentially arbitrary categories. The reality is that there are innumerable factors that shape every unique human personality, including genetics, the environment, culture, and experiences, amongst others. Now, having said all of that, the primary problem with the Myers-Briggs type indicator is not necessarily the test in and of itself. But more so, it's the manner in which it is scored, interpreted, and used by employers. No personality assessment, none, as I said, is, is, is reliable enough to sort people into 16 types, which is why people can get different type profiles when they take the test on multiple occasions. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to label people with codes such as INTP or ESTJ, and then to regard these codes as irrefutable traits of personality. For those of you that are interested, when I did the test 10 years ago, um, I was classified as INTP. I don't know whether that has changed. I've only ever done it the one. What you could use for assessment, what you could use the assessment for, I suppose, is to open up group discussions within a training program or a workshop, for example. It would be quite good for that. Participants could discuss the similarities and the differences they see as self-reflection topics rather than hard and fast rules of totally different personality types. You know, the thing is, it, it's a sad reality that Myers-Briggs is used as a recruitment tool by many companies. It's also used by several government agencies and even the US military. They waste millions of pounds on what is essentially a useless test. I mean, it doesn't predict behavior. It isn't a diagnostic tool. And honestly, using it as a recruitment tool probably eliminates some really amazing candidates. People take it so seriously. Some even use it as part of their identity. I'm INTP or I'm ENTJ or whatever the case may be. I've heard HR managers tell heads of departments that they need more ENSPs or more ENTJs in their department, which of course is quite ridiculous. Almost as ridiculous as telling someone they need more red personalities and more blue personalities on their team. Realistically, if you want to feel good about yourself, which is essentially what Myers-Briggs does and does well, go read some inspirational quotes on Instagram. There's no need to spend £80 doing a test that's going to tell you how great you are. And for the love of God, if you whack an HR, Stop using it as a recruitment tool. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.